Let's talk about the biochemistry of carbohydrates, hydrates of carbon, meaning carbon containing compounds which have got water. What are their functions? Carbohydrates are going to be able to yield energy on the oxidation, and the energy is very vital in the operation of an organism. Some carbohydrates which are insoluble are used as a structural and protective elements. For example, in cell walls of bacteria and in plants, they're also used in connective tissue of animals. Other carbohydrates are found at the joints acting as lubricants. Other carbohydrates are used in cell-to-cell -cell recognition and cell-to-cell -cell adhesion. And also they are used in cell migration during development, blood clotting, immune response, and wound healing. So Carbohydrates are going to be divided into monosaccharides, disaccharides, and polysaccharides. Let's concentrate on the monosaccharides. Monosaccharides are simply simple sugars, which consist of a single polyhydroxyaldehyde or ketone. So these are the simplest sugars. They can either be aldehydes or ketones. And the most abundant form of the monosaccharides is the D form. When you talk about proteins or let me say amino acids, the most abundant form is the L form. Now, these monosaccharides are going to be named depending with the number of carbon atoms they have as either being triosis, tetrases, pentoses, or exoses, or even heptoses. They can also be classified as aldehydes or ketones. So there can be outdoor sugars or keto sugars. Now, if we classify these as being aldehydes, meaning that the carbonyl functional group is at the end of the chain. If the carbonyl functional group is on the middle of the chain, those are going to be ketones. So monosaccharides, which have got more than four carbons, are going to be found in the ring form because in that way they're going to be more stable. The simplest monosaccharide which we have is a triose, which can either be glycer aldehyde or dihydroxyacetone. Glycer aldehyde is an aldehyde, while dihydroxyacetone is a ketone. We also have tetroses, which can also be aldehydes or ketones. We have got pentoses. Now I want us to take note of a ribose, which forms RNA. It's very, very important in the formation of RNA. So that is the pentose sugar. So we are going to talk about, of course, I was supposed to have also deoxyribose here. Now I'm going to talk about it as a sugar derivative. So when I get to remove an hydroxide from this one, let me say I replace one hydroxide with only an hydrogen. We are going to form another thing, which is called deoxyribose. We also have exos sugars. Now, if we look at, there are a lot of them, but if we look at glucose and mannose, they are basically the same. They only differ at carbon number two. So they are structural isomers. And then glucose and the galactose also, they are basically the same. They only differ at carbon number four. So they are also isomers, right? Now, when you're talking about sugar derivatives, these are simply compounds which are formed when the hydroxide group of one sugar molecule is replaced by another group or when oxidation of the carbonyl functional group gets to happen. We have got aldonic acid as the first one. Aldonic acid is formed by the oxidation of carbon number one of aldehydes. And so when you oxidize that, you are going to no longer have the aldehyde functional group, you are going to have the carboxylic acid functional group. In the case of D-glucose, when you oxidize carbon number one, you are going to have gluconic acid. So this one is aldonic acid. There is oxidation which has happened. So gluconic acid or aldonic acids are important as gelding and solubilizing agents and also in cosmetics as antioxidants. They prevent oxidation. You also have uronic acid. Uronic acid is formed by the oxidation of carbon number six. So in a case where D-glucose is oxidized at position number six, we are going to form D-glucuronic acid. So what are the functions of uronic acids? Uronic acids are important in connective tissue and they're going to be found uh, in excretion in urine, uronic acids, right? We also have aldaric acids. Aldaric acids 
are formed by the oxidation of carbon number one and carbon number six, or both, meaning it is more like a combination of aldonic acid and uronic acid. So if I get to oxidize carbon number one and carbon number six of glucose, and then I'm going to form this compound. Right, so these are our daric acids, and in this case, what we are going to form is the glucaric acid. Now, glucaric acid is important as a chelating agent, it's going to bind to metal ions. And when these chelating agents bind to metal ions, they are able to remove metals from the body. We also have auditos, auditos are formed now not by oxidation as these others, but by reduction. We can see we have got a ketone functional group. I mean, an aldehyde functional group, it is reduced. We no longer have an aldehyde functional group there. So in this case, when we get to reduce glucose, we are going to form sorbitol, all right? And this happens when NADPH is converted to NADP+, which is, uh, of course, this process is happening in the presence of an enzyme, aldose reductase. So auditos are used as thickeners and sweeteners. They are also used as sh sugar substitutes for those patients with diabetes. We also have deox sugars, which I already talked about it. For example, when you have got ribose at carbon number two, instead of having or hydroxide, one of hydrogen, deoxy means we remove an oxygen. So we're going to have deoxyribose, which is found in DNA. So it is important in the formation of purines and pyrimidine nucleotides. We also have amino sugars where carbon number two of these sugars, mostly we can see six-membered sugar, is replaced by an amine group. And mostly to this amine, of course, the way it is just like this, we're going to call this as glucosamine. Now, mostly the amine group is going to also attach an acetate, and so we're going to form N-acetylglucosamine. Now, this one is important because it is found in, uh, in bacterial cell wall, the, the N-acetylglucosamine, found very important in bacterial cell wall. We also have sialic acid. Now, these are basically six-membered rings. So sialic acids, they, have, they play an important role in cellular communication and also stabilizing cellular membranes. They also bind and transport ions and drugs. They also stabilize the formation of proteins such as enzymes. Apart from that, they also protect molecules and cells from attack by proteases or glycosidases. So this is basically on the monosaccharides.